Throughout the ages, many have obtained guidance helpful to resolve challenges in their life by following example of respected individuals who resolved similar problems. Today, world conditions change so rapidly that such a course of action is often not available to us. Personally, I rejoice in that reality because it creates a condition where we of necessity are more dependent upon the Spirit to guide us through the vicissitudes of life. Therefore, we are led to seek personal inspiration in life's important decisions. What can you do to enhance your capacity to be led to correct decisions in your life? What are the principles upon which spiritual communication depend? What are the potential barriers to such communication that you need to avoid? Father in Heaven knew that you'd face challenges that would require to make decisions that would be beyond your own ability to decide correctly. In His plan of happiness, He included a provision for you to receive help with such challenges and decisions during your mortal life. That assistance will come to you through the Holy Ghost as spiritual guidance. It's a power beyond your own capability that a loving Heavenly Father wants you to use consistently for your peace and happiness. I am convinced that there is no simple formula or technique that would immediately allow you to master the ability to be guided by the voice of the Spirit. Our Father expects you to learn how to obtain that divine help by exercising faith in Him and His Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Were you to receive inspired guidance just for the asking, you'd become weak and ever more dependent on them. They know that essential personal growth will come as you struggle to learn how to be led by the Spirit what may appear initially to be a daunting task will be much easier to manage over time if you consistently strive to recognize and follow the feelings prompted by the Spirit. Your confidence in the direction you receive from the Holy Ghost will also become stronger. I witness that as you gain experience and success in being guided by the Spirit, your confidence and the impressions you feel can become more certain than your dependence on what you see or hear. Spirituality yields two fruits. The first is inspiration, to know what to do. The second is power, or the capacity to do it. These two capacities come together. That's why Nephi could say, I will go and do the things which the Lord has commanded. He knew that spiritual laws upon which inspiration and power are based is God answers prayer and gives us spiritual direction when we live obediently and exercise the required faith in Him. Now I'll share an experience that taught me a way to gain spiritual guidance. One Sunday, I attended a priesthood meeting in a Spanish branch in Mexico City. I vividly recall how a humble Mexican priesthood leader struggled to communicate the truths of the gospel in his lesson material. I noted the intense desire he had to share those principles he strongly valued with his quorum members. He recognized that they were of great worth to the brethren present. In his manner, there was an evidence of pure love, the Savior and love of those he taught. His sincerity, purity of intent, and love permitted a spiritual strength to envelop the room. I was deeply touched. Then I began to receive personal impressions as an extension of the principles taught by that humble instructor. 
They were personally related to my assignments in the area. They came in answer to my prolonged prayerful efforts to learn. As each impression came, I carefully wrote it down. In the process, I was given precious truths that I greatly needed in order to be a more effective servant of the Lord. The details of the communication were sacred and, like a patriarchal blessing, were for my individual benefit. I was given specific directions, instructions, conditioned promises that have beneficially altered the course of my life. Subsequently, I visited the Sunday School class in our ward, where a very well-educated teacher presented his lesson. That experience was in striking contrast to the one enjoyed in the priesthood meeting. It seemed to me that the instructor had purposely chosen obscure references, unusual examples, to illustrate the principle. I had the distinct impression that since the instructor was using the teaching opportunity to impress the class with his vast star of, store of knowledge, at any rate, he certainly did not seem as intent on communicating principles as had the humble priesthood leader. In that environment, strong impressions began to flow to me again. I wrote them down. The message included specific counsel on how to become more effective as an instrument in the hands of the Lord. I continued to write the feelings that flooded into my mind and heart as faithful as possible after each powerful impression was recorded I pondered the feelings I had received to determine if I had accurately expressed them in writing as a result I made a few minor changes to what had been written then I studied their meaning and application in my life subsequently I prayed reviewing with the Lord what I thought had been taught by the Spirit. When the feeling of peace came, I thanked Him for the guidance given. I was impressed to ask, was there yet more to be given? I received further impressions. In the process of writing down the impressions, pondering, praying for confirmation, was repeated. Again, I was prompted to ask, is there more I should know? And there was. When that last most sacred experience was concluded, I had received some of the most precious, specific personal direction that one could hope to obtain in this life. Had I not responded to the first impression and recorded them, I would not have received the last, most precious guidance. What I have described is not an isolated experience. It embodies several true principles regarding communication from the Lord to His children here on earth. I believe that you can leave the most precious personal direction of the Spirit unheard because you do not respond and apply the first promptings that come to you. Impressions of the Spirit can come and respond to urgent prayer or unsolicited when needed. Sometimes the Lord reveals truth to you when you're not actively seeking it, such as when you're in danger and do not know it. However, the Lord will not force you to learn you must exercise your agency to authorize the Spirit to teach you. As you make this a practice in your life, you'll be more perceptive to the feelings that come with spiritual guidance. And when that guidance comes, sometimes when you least expect it, you'll recognize it more easily. 
inspiring influence of the Holy Spirit can be overcome or masked by strong emotions such as anger, hate, passion, fear, or pride. When such influence are present, it's like trying to savor the delicate flavor of a grape while eating a jalapeno pepper. Both flavors are present, but one completely overpowers the other. In like manner, strong emotions overcome the delicate promptings of the Holy Spirit. I share a warning. Satan is extremely good at blocking spiritual communication by inducing individuals through temptation to violate the laws that spiritual communication is founded. But some he's able to convince them that they're not able to receive such guidance from the Lord. Satan has become a master at using the addictive power of pornography to limit individual capacity to be led by the Spirit. The onslaught of pornography in all of its vicious, corroding, destructive forms has caused great grief, suffering, heartache, and destroyed marriages. It is one of the most damning influences on earth, whether it be through the printed page, movies, television, scene lyrics, vulgarities on the telephone, or a flickering personal computer screen. Pornography is overpoweringly addictive and severely damaging. This potent tool of Lucifer degrades the mind and heart and the soul of any who use it. All who are caught in its seductive, tantalizing web and remain so will become addicted to its immoral, destructive influence. For many, that addiction cannot be overcome without help. The tragic pattern is so familiar. It begins with curiosity that is fueled by stimulation justified by the false premise that when done privately, it does no harm to anyone else. Lulled by this lie, the experimentation goes deeper in more powerful stimulations until the trap closes and a terribly immoral, addictive habit exercises its vicious control. Participation in pornography in any of its lurid forms is a manifestation of unbridled selfishness. How can a man, particularly a priesthood bearer, not think of the emotional and spiritual damage caused to Mimon, especially his wife, by such abhorrent activity? Well did inspire Nephi declare, and the devil will pacify and lull them away into carnal security, and thus he cheateth their souls and leadeth them away carefully down to hell. If you're ensnared in pornography, make a total commitment to overcome it now. Find a quiet place, pray urgently for help and support. Be patient and obedient. Don't give up. Parents, be aware that the addiction to pornography can begin with youth at a very early age. Take preventative action to avoid that tragedy. Stake presence and bishops warn of this evil. Invite any you consider captured by it to come to you for help. Have patience as you're perfecting your ability to be led by the Spirit, by careful practice through the application of correct principles, and being sensitive to the feelings that come, you will gain spiritual guidance. I bear witness that the Lord, through the Holy Ghost, can speak to your mind and heart. Sometimes The impressions are just general feelings. Sometimes the direction comes so clearly and so unmistakably 
that it can be written down like spiritual dictation. I bear solemn witness that as you pray with all the fervor of your soul, with humility and gratitude, you can learn to be consistently guided by the Holy Spirit in all aspects of your life. I have confirmed the truthfulness of that principle in the crucible of my own life. I testify that you can personally learn to master the principles of being guided by the Spirit that way. The Savior can guide you to resolve the challenges of life and enjoy great peace and happiness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.